Hi everyone, today I'm here at ETH Zurich in Switzerland and I'm here with Jess. Hi! Who, she runs a channel called Steminen and I'll put some links down to her stuff in the description. But I thought we'd have a bit of a conversation today about what it's like studying at somewhere like ETH, a mm -hmm. European university and um, because you're a student from abroad, you're from Canada, so maybe comparing what it's like to study here versus back home, what the exams maybe look like? Yeah, I mean, definitely for, I think it was a bit of a shock when I first came here <laughs> because, um, well, first of all, it was the difference between uh, undergraduate and master's exams. Um, but additionally, I think there's a quite a bit of a difference between Canadian exams and European exams. In Canada, I've never had an oral exam. They were all sort of like those written exams that you've shown before on your channel. For example, the MIT exam that you've shown on your channel. They're all pretty similar, you know, three pr or six problems solved in three hours. Mm. So you, I didn't say, but you're a mechanical engineer. Oh, student, yes. So <laughs> your master's, was that in mechanical engineering? Yeah, so my master's was in mechanical engineering with a concentration in aerospace. So, yeah, all of my classes were, mm. yeah, just typical yeah. mechanical engineering with additional aerospace classes. And I would say only a few of my exams have been those type of written exams, but most of them have been oral exams, which are... <laughs> I bet that's sort of foreign to me. So I like did my undergrad in Australia, New Zealand, and yeah, written exams are pretty much all I've ever done. I've done one oral exam for electronics, but okay. I've never had to actually really explain physics. What is an oral exam? Like how, how are you tested on just what, can you, it's like an interview? Is that what happens? Yeah, so basically it's 30 minutes and the prof and there's usually two or three profs there. So one person is scribing down what you're writing and then the prof is kind of grilling you. <laughs> and what happens is that yeah, so you come in by yourself and when they're telling you to study for the exam, they're always telling you to, like, we're not there to see what you don't know. We're there to see how much you do know. Mm -hmm. And that's a lie. <laughs> they're definitely there to find out what part of the course you don't know. So for example, in any course you have, um, what, 10 different chapters of things that you need to know. And then generally on your engineering exams, on your written exams, you have um, six questions that will sort of cover everything in that mm. exam. And what I found with oral exams is that the prof kind of has those six questions on their paper, but they'll ask you three of them. And then if you're good at answering those first three, then they'll start asking yeah. you the <laughs> other three. So for example, I was taking uh, my combustion class exam. They asked me to draw a diagram of flame temperature versus equivalence ratio. doesn't matter if you don't know what that is. I'm just giving an example. Did I give so, you like a pen and paper or is this on the whiteboard? No, so, so sometimes they make you go up to the board and sometimes they give you the paper and then like it's kind of more casual because you can sit down, but sometimes you're standing in front of them and presenting and it's kind of awkward. So for example, when I drew my diagram, I drew it for one specific case and then they're like they ask you everything about the diagram you drew if you didn't draw it properly so they're like oh normally would it be so pointed and you're like um no actually this is in the perfect case and they're like okay well when what would be a non-perfect case and then you have to kind of draw it in every way and then they're like oh well what happens if you increase the temperature what happens if you change the the species like how would the diagram shift this is just one example so basically they're trying to quiz your most fundamental knowledge um, of a specific question so even if you answer it perfectly on a written exam it's not the same because if you answer it perfectly in an oral exam they'll be like okay but and then they'll just keep asking you additional questions they like kind of find where your knowledge breaks down exactly yeah. so they will kind of just keep asking you questions until you start to stutter mm. <laughs> which is fine because sometimes so the grades the way it works is that a four is a fail and a mm. six is a perfect so anywhere in between your grade can lie as long so if you answer that first question you're at a four and then the more they keep asking you and the more knowledge that they keep trying to get from you and like okay but okay but okay but yeah. your grade will kind of increase the more of those questions yeah. that you can answer. I think it's, it, it mm. sounds actually similar to the one oral exam I've had um, where it was like 
yeah, it was like nerve wracking because you know that the more questions they ask, you're eventually going to get to a point where you're just floundering and that's sort of embarrassing. But on a written exam, you can just put your answer and just like, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to justify it that much. But um, I remember like I was being asked questions and I was like drawing how a circuit would work and he was like asking me, oh, like uh, what would change if we like change this component to a capacitor? And I'd be like, oh, it would like maybe the voltage would go up question mark looking at him <laughs> judging his facial expressions or and then he'd be like hmm, no, look down, down. <laughs> yeah, trying to like read it like that but um yeah I, I think maybe you just shouldn't be so scared of reaching that point where it breaks down because to have gotten to that point anyway you've probably done all right yeah, it, yeah that's exactly it so they sort of have these base questions where they'll be like do they know the most basic knowledge about this course? Mm. And then once you've answered those questions, you kind of get a four, which is a pass. And then after that, they, they ask you to mm. um, build off of that knowledge and just kind of push you as far as they possibly can to see if you mm. can reach a six. Right. Um, so do you have any stories of like actual oral exams that really you remember? Yeah, I mean, I was going into my turbulence modeling exam once and I was absolutely terrified for this exam because there was so much material and I was t I was honestly like he could ask anything and my fundamental knowledge can break down if you just at any if, point. <laughs> yeah. So I was terrified of this exam. <laughs> I ended up passing. I actually did quite well on the exam, but before I went in the person before me came out of the exam and I'm sitting there like looking over my notes like really nervous like almost about to throw up and this guy comes out of the exam very calmly closes the door starts walking away and just like go like screams the <laughs> f-word <laughs> and it echoed through the entire hall and I was like <laughs> like start a I'm like, I'm like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, you're gonna pass, you're gonna pass, you're gonna pass. That's exactly what you wanna hear. Yeah. <laughs> and I got so scared and then I went inside. This was definitely the most stressful exam I've ever written in my life. They gave me um, 15 minutes, so the exam is 30 minutes. They gave me 15 minutes to go through and kind of, it was a, it was a written exam kind of, they had written questions and there was, I think, six pages and about five questions on each page okay. <laughs> and they gave me 15 minutes to you don't have to write the answers down you just kind of have to write like draw a diagram mm. or like write some keywords okay. and then in the last 15 minutes you go and you present your explanations and they would be like <laughs> why did you write down this word and I would be like that's because and then I would relate that to the answer okay. so some of my answers were actually blank and in that last 50 like if I didn't have time to write it I'd be like I know the answer to that question it's actually blah 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 hmm. I could see how the other guy did terrible <laughs> 15 minutes doesn't sound like a very long time <laughs> no it, it was it was honestly the most and after this exam it was my last exam of my master's and I was like I definitely feel like I deserve this degree. And <laughs> so what did you do when you left that exam? Did you give a reaction to the next person waiting? And, no, there was no one, no waiting, one waiting after me, one. but it was more of like, <sighs> okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go get myself some ice yeah. cream. Well, at least you like sort of left knowing maybe someone else found it hard too. I think it's like, really bad if you leave an exam and you're like talking to your friends and they're like aced it <laughs> yeah no that's that's the worst i mean i'm i'm happy that guy didn't come up to me afterwards i mean i would have definitely been like yeah that was hard but i don't think i failed yeah. okay so yeah oral exams are something that are quite common here at eth yeah yeah so especially in the masters okay i'm not quite sure about the bachelors mm. Mm -hmm. what what else like so you have those alongside normal written exams yeah. How would you say like the written exams here compare to those back home in Canada? Like, I think in Canada, for me it was quite different, difficult because at least in Canada, um, I was I was used to it, so mm -hmm. I could sort of every exam I could sort of expect that there would be six questions, and I would have thirty minutes to answer each problem, mm -hmm. and depending on how much time we dedicated in the class, I knew that 
there's probably going to be an exa a question on, I don't know, steam tables in my thermal class, or there's probably going to be a question on whatever. You could sort of guess. And I think the hardest part of just starting the master's here was that I couldn't guess anymore what was going to be on the exam. Yeah. <laughs> and also, they weren't those typical six question um, exams. It was kind of like I opened the exam and there were 15 questions and then I was like, okay, well now, now I don't know how much time to get dedicate mm -hmm. and I don't know how much they want. Like they definitely don't want 30 minutes of answer anymore. But then, yeah, I don't know. It's really difficult to explain. Yeah, so um, it sounds like most of the difficulty came in the fact that it was just not what you were used to. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess that's going to be difficult all the time if you're like, you're used to how it works in one system. If mm -hmm. you're studying abroad, you just need to get used to how it works in the new system. Exactly. Maybe they're not necessarily harder or easier, it's just different. Um, are the exams in English here? Yeah. yeah, for the masters yeah. they are. And uh, to your point that you were saying that it's hard to get used to it, I think it's easier to get used to the oral exams here because you do a lot more of them than the written exams. Mm -hmm. And the written exams are kind of, yeah, they're really different for whatever whatever class you take. All right, so we've spoken a little bit about, you know, how maybe exams in Europe are a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. So if someone's coming from, say, somewhere like Canada, North America, just outside of Europe, how would they sort of prepare for exams here? How would you recommend someone studies for a European exam? Mm -hmm. Well, so for example, I think in, in at least in Canada and North America, when we get like I was saying earlier about you can sort of guess what kind of ex what ki what the what the professor mm. wants to know from you so for example in thermodynamics 2 they would want to know if you can solve if you can if you know how to use steam tables like mm. if you know how to solve some sort of a problem yeah. using steam tables and then if you've done enough problems you can sort of expect what what yeah, what the problem is going to be I think that's what be. I'm used to it's like if I've done enough of the past papers or past like homework questions I I like it when I feel confident that the questions in the exam will just be like a compilation of those and yeah. not just like if you've done the practice you can do the exam. Yeah and then sometimes they would ask like kind of like a bonus question not a mm. bonus but they would put like oh what would happen to this table if yeah. it was with this other type of material and then you're like and then it kind of tests your fundamental yeah. knowledge and if you don't get it the prof sometimes doesn't expect you because they don't really expect mm. engineers to... Yeah, maybe it sort of sorts out the top few percent. Yeah, yeah. E exactly. Whereas here, it's absolutely <laughs> fundamental to know your fundamentals. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> like, I would suggest that if you were studying for one of these exams, you really, like, maybe if you go through a question, you have to be like, okay, but why? And then you try to answer, okay, but why? And mm. then you just keep trying to answer it until you break down to, yeah, I have no mm. idea. So it's like actually the bigger picture of the idea. Yeah, it, it's mm. really down to, like, I don't, you, you're a physicist, do you do a lot of entropy stuff? Like, have I've you had to? I've done a bit of entropy, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I know that in my, um, bachelors, we kind of knew of entropy, but we, mm. we sort of just knew how to use the equations, but we didn't yeah. really understand it. And the, our professors always made this joke that, yeah, if you don't under, you only understand thermodynamics once you know that you don't know thermodynamics. <laughs> um, whereas here, I would say that it's more of, I think entropy is a good example because it's sort of this this thing where like you can use without really knowing what it mm. is. But here they would expect you to really understand the fundamentals, yeah. which if you know anything about entropy, you know it's a really difficult concept to grasp. And yeah. it goes back to like um, quantum mm. quantum uh, physics, basically. Yeah. And I, I feel a little bit conflicted about that because like in one way, if I'm thinking about education as a whole and my ideal view of education, it's like, yeah, we should know the fundamentals, we should test the fundamentals, and we should have people graduating from courses with deep understandings mm -hmm. of these concepts that they're claiming to know about, rather than just being able to use a couple of equations. Yeah. But on the other side, I know how stressful it is being a student, and like sometimes you just want an exam, that mm -hmm. you just have to plug in a few entropy formulas, and like that you just want to know that you can just show, you can pass mm -hmm. this really stressful thing, and so like, if I was a student, I'd be praying for that like yeah. e predictable exam. But as like someone who wants a deep understanding and wants other people to have deep understanding, I like 
I want it to be, you know, more of this big mm -hmm. stuff. So I feel like conflicted. Like I almost feel like I wish I had an easy exam, but everyone else can like, have <laughs> a hard exam. Like, yeah, I don't know yeah. how to say which is better. Well, I mean, I think it also goes down to this whole idea that I was talking about earlier about the four is the past and the mm. six is the wow, you're really good or whatever. Because I would say that most people at ETH pass. <laughs> like most people have this basic understanding where they answer the questions and the professors are like, okay, they, they get most of the material, mm. they understand, like kind of like what we do in North America. But then if they try to push for your more fundamental knowledge, mm. it, that's where you really can stand out against the rest of the yeah. students. And that's where you can be like, no, I have fundamental knowledge and I can, mm. And um, that's where you can sort of be in the more five, six yeah, well, zone. Yeah, it, it sounds yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, and so, but in general, I think people always joke in Switzerland that's like, if you pass ETH, like, people will hire you yeah. because <laughs> for this reason. Um, mm. So don't stress too much about needing a six or whatever. Yeah. 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 I, I think I would, I used to strive for like the perfect grade. It was like the A plus for mm -hmm. me for no reason other than I felt like I wanted to be a perfectionist and I felt like it was really satisfying to have the A plus, mm -hmm. but in hindsight, uh, that A plus, like it has kind of meant nothing to me once I got into like a PhD program. I don't care about those grades anymore and they caused me so much stress and so yeah. much anxiety. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it, it, like you were saying, it's nice to have those, it's nice to want to strive for a six, but don't beat yourself up if you mm -hmm. don't get it. I mean, I don't think I have a six in any of my classes. I have one 5.75, <laughs> which is the best grade I have, and other ones are like 5.5 or 5.25 or five. And um, I, there have definitely been times where I felt like I com communicated really perfectly and I deserved a six and I didn't get one. And you know, you can't beat yourself up for it. Just do your best and don't worry about the mm, rest. I think that's good. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Jess. Yeah, and I thank think you. we're going to film a video for your channel next. Yes. So you guys can go and check that out if you're interested in learning more. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs>